All right, so today we're going to be talking about outsider music. The term outsider music was popularized by DJ Erwin Chusid in 1990, though it likely had been used before. Similar terms would include the experimental music genre or experimental music scene, or maybe calling something obscure, untrained, or primitive. I sometimes like to just call something raw, which may just mean it has a raw sound, or maybe it doesn't play by the rules or defies genre constraints or traditional definitions of what music can be. Interestingly, unlike some stereotypes that might linger out there, I'm not guaranteed to like all experimental outsider music, even though I definitely like some, you know, experimental music. Some of it has no appeal to me, or may just have a limited appeal due to a sense of novelty. And of course, other stuff can be absolutely fantastic. You know, uh, <clears throat> perhaps perception altering about what music can be. So one of, one of those experiences for me was the band The Red Crayola. When I first heard their album, The Parable of Arable Land, I was like, holy crap. This is a band that really uh, breaks the rules and basically does whatever the hell they want. And, you know, that's sort of the nature of avant-garde, experimental, or outsider music. And, uh, well, anyway, I'm going to move on from the Red Crayola. The act of playing music in a different way or by unusual means can be reasonably called outsider art or avant-garde. <clears throat> The term does not mean an outsider musician has never gained mainstream attention, such as when a journalist interviews them or does a documentary or something like that, and they can of course be influential. Some outsider artists like Daniel Johnston are actually quite influential and some artists who have outsider qualities are nevertheless quite well known. The band Sonic Youth come to mind, or plenty of other alternative rock bands who at least occasionally, really do seem like alternatives to conventional music. You know, like you got the Butthole Surfers, for example. Um, I don't know if they're genuinely considered outsider, you know, as in a strict sense, but they're, they're definitely a band that had some non-mainstream appeal. Of course, punk rock in general, at least when it started out, it had... Very few pop qualities, um, you know. So in that sense, that was outsider music. Of course, some heavy metal also could be considered on the outside. You know, uh, not necessarily for mainstream audiences, etc., etc., you know. In fact, the term gets complicated by the fact that even some classic rock bands like Pink Floyd had a fair amount of experimental or strange elements going on, or maybe entire albums that could be considered appealing to non-mainstream ears. So this is an interesting topic for me because when it comes to the music that I make, it actually could be considered outsider music, um, you know, for some of the reasons I already discussed. See, when I, like, pick up a musical instrument, I try to let a lot of the preconceptions that I have just kind of fall by the side. You know, I uh, I tend to improvise. I, I don't like repeating myself that often. So I, I actually make an effort to not do that. I don't really sit down and write songs. Most of what I do is just like, I wouldn't say free form. I mean, it's not like I never, you know, come up with riffs that I'd repeat or anything like that. Um, but I usually... Just like goofing around, basically. And uh, that kind of stuff can be more listenable than some people out there might think. Like, I think even my, even some of my stuff isn't so uh, extreme and unpalatable. So I guess I'll promote my own music here. If you do want to hear any of my albums, go ahead and check out my strange musical moniker is Grandpa Helicopter. So I, I know that's a weird name, and I really just came up with it sort of randomly. It was just two words that I decided to group together or pair together. And um, it just stuck for some reason. I don't know. And um, 
let's see, what else could I say about, about my own stuff? Um, I'm a multi-instrumentalist, so, you know, like, basically anything I could be using as an instrument if, if it, you know, if the mood strikes me. So I might be playing a guitar. I, I know I've done some recordings with a, with a rare, uh, sort of novelty instrument called a saxy synth kazoo. So I've, I've done stuff like that, um. You know, uh, bass, and electric drums on rare occasions. And I do a lot of uh, delay looping, live delay looping. And uh, also I put metal instruments, or I mean metal uh, objects between the strings of my instruments sometimes. I don't do that so much nowadays, but when I started out playing guitar, I did that quite a lot. You know, it, it changes the way it sounds. I guess the technical term for it is that it changes the timber, or, or however that word is pronounced. <laughs> I know a lot of people could joke about that because it sounds like timber, then you're going to chop down a tree. Um, but it does change the way the instrument sounds. It can make it sound more exotic, I guess. It, it just adds a unique flavor to it. And I, I also like to use, or I, I used to use, a... A uh, neat effect called the, uh, not the rotary speaker, what am I thinking of? Oh, the ring modulator. It's, uh, basically it's the effect that you hear in the solo to Black Sabbath's Paranoid. And you'll see a, a lot of people saying, oh, I, I hate the way the ring modulator sounds, but I, I actually do have a number of recordings where I take advantage of that. And, uh, there's some interesting things you can do with it. And... You know, I, I have a synthesizer now, and uh, basically a bunch of different uh, ways of creating music. And, um, yeah, I don't think I have much more to say. I think I've kind of run out of ideas for this video. Or the, not this video, um, this episode of my podcast. So um, let me know what you think. Like, what is your favorite outsider musical artist? Or I guess if there's an outsider filmmaker or or a writer or something like that, you know, go ahead and let me know. So anyway, I've, I've babbled on for long enough now. I'm going to end the episode. Um, have a good day.